Matt, uh, we've already talked about all the horses, but people want to see our top 10s. I'm going to say this, though. My top 10 is going to change before the Kentucky Derby. For right now, Matt, on my top 10, I went with what I think they've accomplished this year. Uh, that will not be how I bet the Derby. We'll have more about how I bet the Derby in the coming weeks. Who's your number one? I've, been, I've liked Audible. I've liked his turn of foot. I've got number. I've got Audible at number one. Four for four, two easy graded stakes wins. I think Magnum Moon has has uh, accomplished the most this year. I have him at number one, and uh, I have Mendelssohn who won a stake in Ireland before that gigantic, gigantic performance in the UAE Derby at number two. I've got Magnum Moon at number two. Uh, um, I've got the Pletcher Horses one and two in here. Okay. Number three for you, Matt. Are you uh, are you liking the Santa Anita Derby winner? I've got Justify at uh, number three. Again, um, only three races. Could he be the best horse? Absolutely. I think this year any one of the top five, six horses could be the Kentucky Derby winner. But with only one stakes race, one stakes win, I couldn't put him ahead of my number three, who's audible. You're number one. Uh, two for two this year, two graded stakes wins in Florida, both easy. I think he deserves to be this high on this type of list. Number three. Number four for me is the Santa Anita Derby winner and undefeated Justify. And for me, number four is Mendelssohn. Um, I have liked Mendelssohn since uh, he won the juvenile turf, hoping that we would get to see him in the Kentucky Derby, and here he is. Um, could be a super talent. Probably the best performance so far of the year was his UAE Derby. Number five for me, Matt, is Bolt Doro. Uh, he ran into McKinsey, and he ran into Justify, but I, I still think his two races this year are very good, so I have him at number five. I have good magic at number five. I am hoping that Chad Brown has been uh, planning this campaign carefully and that the Kentucky Derby has been the ultimate goal and the bluegrass was a very nice step, but he's going to have to keep improving. Who's your number six, Matt? I got Vina Rossa. I love the, the Wood Memorial performance. Johnny V picks Vina Rossa out of the Pletcher Bunch. At number six for me, good magic uh, for much of the reasons we've already said. I, I know the class is there, and I, I think he will move forward. Uh, but the Bluegrass win was enough to get him number six on my list. And the Wood Memorial win was enough to get Vino Rosso number seven on my list. But I think there is still more to see from number seven, Vino Rosso. At number seven, I've got num Noble Indy. I, I'm kind of going all in on the Pletcher horses. Seems to me that Todd has got this whole point system in Kentucky Derby figured out. So I threw Noble Indy in there to complete the foursome. Well, you have Noble Indy ahead of uh, Bolt Doro, Matt. And I'm going to tell you right now, if Noble Indy beats Bolt Doro in the Kentucky Derby, uh, you can have my house, you can have my dog. Uh, it, it's not going to happen, sir. Noble Indy, uh, Noble Indy did not uh, beat much in an allowance race. He lost to not much in the Risen Star. And uh, he, I don't think he beat much in the Louisiana Derby. To have him ahead of Bolt Doro, sir, I don't, I don't get it at all. But anyway, you're welcome to put him number seven. My number eight is my boy Jack, who I do think was the best horse in that Louisiana Derby. I have Bolt Doro at number eight. And Brian, I... I, I wouldn't take your house from you, but I do like your dog. He, he, he's a sweetheart. So that one, that I might consider. Um, I'm sorry, Bolt Doro fans, but uh, I don't think that Bolt Doro has gotten better. And every once in a while um, in the Kentucky Derby and, and me putting him at number eight is kind of looking a little bit ahead to when I'm going to start wagering. Um, I'm not going to use Bolt Doro. And I will use Bolt Doro, but I won't use my number nine, Flame Away. But again, my list currently is about what they've accomplished. And Flame Away, a stakes winner this year. And uh, he just keeps firing good races, even though he's lost the Tampa Bay Derby and the Bluegrass in his last two. I could say the same thing about my number nine, who is Quip. 
I, I, I'm not sure how much I'll use him when we get to our uh, wagering shows, but horses run five times and uh, three wins, a second in the Arkansas Derby. You can't say anything bad about the horse. Absolutely. And your number 10, Matt? My number 10 is my boy, Jack. And as we mentioned uh, in the field runner rundown, uh, when it comes to the closers and, and the horses who are going to be running at the end, my boy, Jack, is at the top of my list there. My boy, Jack, is a good rallier. That's why I had him at number eight. Number 10 and a two-time stakes winner. My number 10 is... The horse I needled you so badly about, Matt. No, no, Belinda. He is the Louisiana Derby winner, so he makes my top 10 list. Not going to be on my tickets, though. All right, folks. There's our Kentucky Derby top 10. Like I said, mine's going to change. I, I'm sure Matt's will change a little bit, too, as we really talk about who we think will win this Kentucky Derby. Possibly the best Kentucky Derby of the 21st century as far as depth of quality. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that's any hyperbole, sir, to say that uh, this derby looks like it could be something special. 